today I got a 2004 Ford Excursion that has a problem with starting and I'll let you listen to it now hopefully you can hear it properly and what it'll do is it'll try to start it'll like hiccup and hiccup again and and uh, may just go cranking after that but usually they keep hiccuping and you keep trying and trying you think it's gonna start and you'll have a valid crank signal and all that stuff uh, oil pressure over here and I'll let you listen now and then we'll get into the diagnostics a little bit and then uh, how to change out the ficum itself you listen for it now it may crank strong it may pick up and try to start and this right here is a dead giveaway that your ficum is failing every one of these uh, circuits for the injectors are low think about what's the chance of every one of these harness or injector wise going bad the only thing that's central to all of those is the ficum itself all right, now the best way to diagnose a ficum that's failing, especially when you're doing a cold start, before it ever sets those codes for injector circuit low, is to actually come in here and look at the data stream to the PCM. Get your scan tool out and check these few PIDs on there, and we can, we can tell right away uh, if, it, if it has an issue or not, especially when cranking. Now what I want to point out on here is that the powers you need to check are the L power and the V power and the M power. Now the V power and L power should be battery voltage, so they should be 10 volts or higher, 9 volts is okay, but 10 volts and higher even during cranking is best. And then your M power, that's your actual power going out to your injectors. So that needs to be 48 volts to really fire those injectors, especially uh, fire them properly. And if you have anything below that, according to Ford, it will actually cause misfires and no starts and all the other rest because the injectors aren't actually firing the actual spool valve. They're not moving uh, inside of them. So as you can see over here, we are at 47 to 48 volts. Going along, the key is just on at this point. And then once you get over here, and you can see I'm cranking because of the drop of voltage coming into the thickum. Once I start cranking the engine and try to start it while it's cold, you can see that M power for the thickum drops out of the sky to 43 and kept dropping from there. We're going to try to give you a bird's eye view here. I got this new camera mount where it attaches to just about anything. We're going to hang off the hood here and uh, show you how I get it done. And then I'll put you down there closer once we start getting towards the thickum itself. And hopefully I don't get in the way too much here. Got our lines. Make sure that's tight again. After you pull the pressure out, I'm going to loosen these. Okay. I'm gonna pull them off. Come to the side. Make sure they're pointing upright so they don't start leaking on you. Because they'll do it silently and they'll be leaking all down your engine the whole time you're doing this. And then we're gonna cap this bottle off. It's about three eighths. Is the size on here? Pull the 8 mil over here for the clamp. It's a little too loose. And then we're going to just cut the mass here flow. And then we're going to loosen these. We'll take them out actually. And put those to the side. And that will allow us room to get the, the air cleaner out here. Something like this. Get your air minder. Then we can get this whole baby out of here. One piece. And then after that, again, make sure it's clicked. These ports are sealed. And we're going to pull this thing down and out and put it upright. Something like this. And that way it'll be off to the side. There we go. And now you can see a lot better the thickum right here. 
After that, once you get deep down in here, on the early, on the 03s and the early 04s, it looks something like this, whereas the, the newer ones from 04 and a quarter on uh, use 10 millimeter nuts like this, and they used 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts back there, whereas this one has uh, 13 millimeter bolts back there. And there's two on each side. And this snorkel right here for the turbo, it's best to get this out of the way an old and four and a quarter and newer, whereas this one, being so old in this other style, I would actually just get rid of this bracket. There's two eight millimeter nuts right here. And then you gotta take these two nuts off anyways. Get this bracket out of here, and then you could get your them out of here. Not these old ones, they have these uh, stud type bolts like this. So you gotta pull out the bolt after you pull off the nuts for the bracket for the air filter. And uh, it's a 13 millimeter also. And then it should be free. It'll be stuck to it. Yeah, there you go. It's stuck to a little bit. Now once your ficum is free from the valve cover, there's three connectors on here and they have clips on both sides uh, to hold them in. So you gotta make sure you unclip both of them. And there might be a little bit of a fight to get them out. There's a lot of pins on them. But make sure you unclip both sides and then just give it a good tug and get them off of there. Before you go touching the actual connectors on there, make sure that the key is off. And you should probably have the batteries disconnected. I don't do it, but uh, you should definitely have the key off because these are high voltage. Okay, so the way you're going to be able to tell if you can rebuild your FICM or not is to disconnect all power from it so it's not powered up internally because it's high voltage inside of there. And then we're going to pull these T20 screws out of there. And your cover may be stuck to it a little bit with the seal on there and all that. Of course, this one's been off already. And uh, you're going to inspect for these bus bar screws right here. If you have seven of them like this, then you cannot rebuild it. There's no rebuildable components inside of there that are available, commercially anyways. Uh, but if you have the four in a line, like four in a row, just like this, without the other three, but they'll be centered, obviously, those ones you can rebuild. So that's how you know. Plus, if you have the... Um, the ICP sensor and the front valve cover by the oil fill spout and all that. If you have that, you have a late build 04, which means um, you can you can bet that yours is rebuildable. Only the early builds, uh, 04s and of course the 03s were not rebuildable, and those had the old style ICPs and all the rest of the old style components. And the big update was 04 and a quarter. So. Hopefully you have the rebuildable one, because that'll save you a lot of money. Now on the old ones, you're going to have to pull out the bushings. You're going to have to pop them through there from the back side here, something like this. And then they'll push through and come out like that. And they just transfer all over to the new one. Push them out of here. The old stuff out of here. On the new ones, you don't have to do this. Now these are going to be dry, these actual uh, bushings in the center here. So I put a little bit of dielectric grease on because it won't affect the rubber. So I'll put both sides on there, just like so, and we'll slip it through and it goes in nice and easy. Something like that. And the same thing with this one. Two halves back together. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera there. And then you just stick that right into there. You're set to go. Now the one thing I do is this rubber on the outside here is what makes it so hard to get them in and out. The connectors on here, put a little bit of dielectric grease in there. And that'll make sure you get them fully seated. Because you want both sides of that connector to be seated. And this will make sure you get it in there with ease. And uh, get both sides clipped on there. Now going back in, like I said, make sure each one of these connectors uh, clicks in fully both sides. You share two clicks per connector. Let's hopefully be able to hear it here. You hear them there? You gotta make sure that happens on each one of these. After that, basically after that, installation is reversal of removal. Now, last thing you gotta do is program the FICM to the vehicle, but luckily for fleets and otherwise, they offer pre programmed ones now that are just drop ins. So that's nice. You can just pop it in there, start it up, and drive off. Um, there is a repair procedure for these for the DC to DC converter in there, and that's what usually goes bad on these. 
Now in contrast, here's the same data, but after the FICM has been replaced with a brand new unit where the DC to DC converter is working properly. You can see our input voltages are just fine, 10, 11, 12 volts, okay? And then our actual FICM M power is 48 volts, which is perfect. And then you go along here, right here is 48 volts, and you can see once I start cranking the drop in voltage coming into it, you can see I only dropped to about 47.5, 47 volts, 48, and it keeps going back and forth. It stays there, and it can hang with it, um, whereas before, once it, put, it had a load on it, it just couldn't hang, and it just dropped right down out of the sky. Uh, so that's the big thing to watch out for. Even before you have any code set, don't just look at a key on engine off. Go, oh, I got 48 volts, 47. It should be just fine. It should be just fine. You better crank it because, it, like I showed in the other one, once it has strain on it, it just dropped out, and that will cause your nose start.